Now at 10, the city of Miami, Oklahoma hosts a special meeting to discuss a lease agreement for a new Boys and Girls Club facility. Plus, we'll hear from the Joplin Humane Society about the benefits of fostering shelter dogs. And Pittsburgh Parks and Rec host a camp for kids on spring break. The four states most watched news starts now. A Kansas court sides with the state attorney general on the sex listed on a person's driver's license. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Tanya Bach. The District Court of Shawnee County today issued a temporary injunction and memorandum decision in the case. Attorney General Chris Kobach last year sued Governor Laura Kelly after she announced she would not enforce a rule requiring driver's licenses to list sex at birth and only sex at birth. The court today agreed with Kobach, saying the rule must be enforced. The city of Miami, Oklahoma today held a special meeting to discuss some ongoing issues, including a lease agreement for a new Boys and Girls Club facility. The plan is for the new facility to be located downtown by the Coleman Theater. Multiple residents spoke during the meeting, expressing concern the plan would take away much needed parking space at the theater. No action was taken at today's meeting. It will be readdressed at a meeting on Thursday. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us with a first look at weather. So temperature today already dropping down to 56 with our low being in the low 50s, so not too cold. And tomorrow temperatures getting up to 72. Now across the region we're dipping down to the 50s for an overnight low across the region being in the lower 50s, not getting much cooler than that with anybody. We do see humidity start to increase, but earlier it was pretty low and we'll see some lower humidity rates tomorrow as well. In addition to that, we're also going to have some pretty fast wind gusts through tomorrow morning, gusting upwards of 40 to 45 miles per hour. These all paired together could cause some issues for fire weather. Now, it's not long lived. We do have some rain chances moving in tomorrow evening. I'll have more details for you up next. All right, looking forward to that. Thanks, Lindsay. The city of Carl Junction says its storm sirens have been fixed. The police department announced the sirens were down last Thursday ahead of a storm system moving in. And today they had a technician come in to fix an electrical issue in the system. They also say they placed an order for a new digital radio system to control activation. The Web City, Missouri organization is helping military spouses get support. Charlie Tutu Outdoors today hosted an event for the spouses to connect and talk about the struggles they face. It was called Plug Into Hope. In this case, PLUG stands for Prayer, Love, Unity, Grace, and Hope stands for Holding Onto Promises Eternal. That they're not alone and that they can, that they have a community that they can lean on through hard times. Um, because being a military spouse is very, very difficult. A lot of people don't understand the struggles, especially when they, when the, um, their warriors come home and you know, the battle doesn't end <laughs> when they come home. Charlie Tutu Outdoors plans to host these events every Monday from 11 AM to 1 PM at the group's clubhouse. The Joplin Humane Society says it has an urgent need for foster parents for their animals. They say foster homes for puppies are especially important. The Humane Society tries to keep young puppies out of the shelter to avoid them getting sick or spreading illnesses like par parvovirus or distemper. Puppies stay here. It's not if they're going to get sick, it's when and how sick are they going to get. So fosters are a huge component to helping puppies make it through the shelter system and get to new homes healthy and happy. Well, people interested in fostering an animal from the Humane Society are encouraged to come in and fill out an application. The shelter says they provide all needs for the pet, including food, dishes, and any medication needed. What well, is spring break and some Pittsburgh kids are enjoying their days off at Camp Now and Then. The program offers kids ages 5 to 12 the opportunity to play games create crafts, and make new friends. KOM's Fernanda Silva has more. It is, it is cereal. It's Fruit Loops. I don't really like Fruit Loops. Stevie Snyder is one of more than 20 kids spending a couple of hours of her spring break days 
at camp now and then. You can make friends with them and have fun. And grow up together. There she's meeting new people and also trying new things. I've never tried them before. <laughs> Good. Another thing Snyder enjoys at the camp is the activities they do there. It's fun to do stuff. I mean, learn new things. We go throughout the day. We go outside. We do crafts. We do games. Um, we do have um, an activity like a PE time. And then this afternoon, we do different games and crafts and go outside again. The fun for the kids comes with peace of mind for their parents gives parents an opportunity for child care since we it's so scarce around here. So when our parents are not around at home or our, our bigger siblings, we get to come here so they get to do what they need to do. It also allows the little ones to bond with kids from other schools. It's such a fun time for kids. We have a blast every single time we're here. Um, and it's not just our staff, as you can tell, they don't just supervise, we actually interact with the kids. We go play games, we go do crafts with them, we do everything with them. Fun for everybody. In Pittsburgh, Fernanda Silva, KOEM News. Well, the registration for the spring break camp now and then is closed already, but parents can register their kids to be at the camp on other days USD 250 is out of school. You can find more information on our website at koamnewsnow.com. Crochet fanatics recognize the month as International Crochet Month, but for one middle school student in Pittsburgh, crochet is more than a hobby. It's an opportunity. Autumn sells her crochet creations at Root Coffee Shop. She also hosts classes to teach others. Autumn says she loves watching her students' skills grow. It doesn't take a lot of time to make something like a lot of these kids here today have um, made four flowers or so in two hours and I thought it would maybe take them a little bit longer than it has. The crochet class continues tomorrow at 9 a.m. at the Root Coffee Shop in Pittsburgh. Fun way to spend your break. Well, coming up, what a new survey shows about the job satisfaction of teachers in Missouri. Plus, the latest on the Department of Justice's investigation into Boeing mishaps. Southeast Kansas man faces a number of charges after a standoff last Thursday in a home. Officials say he was trying to rob. The hour-long standoff happened in the middle of the day last Thursday when a resident northeast of Caney, Kansas, called 911. The caller reporting a suspected burglary after discovering his door was forcibly opened. Deputies used what they referred to as less lethal methods to remove that suspected burglar from the home. Andrew Cook from Coffeeville is now charged with aggravated burglary, criminal damage to property, interference with a law enforcement officer, and attempted theft by threat. His first court appearance is set for Thursday. Teachers, districts, and state agencies have all been reviewing the latest member survey from the Missouri State Teachers Association. Chris Bryant breaks down the results. 70%, that's the number of educators who say they are thinking about leaving the profession, with more than 17% saying they consider it very often. A number that of, of teachers that either have certainly considered it or um, they're absolutely going to leave the profession in the next year, and that's concerning. That's up from 2019, when just more than 62% said they had seriously considered leaving the profession. The highest um, reasons for leaving are, of course, salary and then um, student behavior. And that's been very challenging for uh, teachers over the last uh, three years. Nearly 60% say the lack of pay and 63% say student behavior are the reasons for wanting to leave the profession. But stress and burnout are also at the top when it comes to concerns. It's two sides of the coin. The first side is pay, but you can see a lot of the MSTA members um, voicing that stress and burnout are really superseding pay when it comes to the challenges for them personally to remain in the profession. For the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, it's about elevating the profession of teaching to a higher level. This is the profession that prepares all other professions the respect that we have for that profession, the support that teachers are provided, not just from their building administrators, but from families and their entire community. 
For those in the classroom and working with teachers within MSTA, they understand the concerns the report shows. Lana Moore is the Southwest Region President with MSTA, and in a statement to KY3 said in part, I know we are losing quality educators who are leaving the profession for other opportunities with less stress and more pay. I hope we can make substantive change that provide teachers with a better working environment and students with a better learning environment. Desi says it's working with districts to help with those retention efforts when it comes to teachers. And I think you're seeing a real focus with uh, grant dollars that went out from Desi. One in six teachers are considering leaving because of safety concerns. Nearly 17 percent say physical assault of staff is a problem. We thought that there would be a number of individuals that were concerned about their safety in the classroom, what we found was they're concerned about their colleagues' safety in the classroom. So several of our members said, you know what, I haven't experienced uh, something happening to me, but I have uh, seen it happen to my colleagues. MSTA says every teacher should feel safe at school and that work needs to be done to help all involved. Of course, it is a privilege. It's something that we have, but it's also a right. It's also an opportunity for us to do what we can to help not just students now, but future Missourians. Well, the Biden administration says it expects Boeing to cooperate with investigations by the Justice Department and the National Transportation Safety Board into the Alaska Airlines door blowout incident. The airline says an inspection found loose bolts on many of its Boeing MAX 9s. But the company also acknowledged it cannot find records related to the removal of the door panel prompting criticism from transportation officials. They need to uh, go through a serious transformation here uh, in terms of their responsiveness, their culture, and their quality issues. The company also comes just, the comment also comes just days after a different Boeing aircraft. This one, a United Airlines flight from San Francisco, lost at least one tire during takeoff. And the following day, another Boeing 737 rolled onto the grass while exiting the taxiway in Houston. No one was seriously hurt in either incident. A little later, Pitt State men's and women's teams are headed to the Division II National Tournament. We're going to break down their first round matchups. And we've got some thunderstorm chances in the forecast. We'll have more details right after the break. Thunderstorm chances are increasing as we move into the week, but temperatures are also increasing, seeing temperatures up to 79 by Wednesday. Clear skies tonight. Taking a look at our Indigo Sky Casino and Resort camera. It's a gorgeous night. Pretty warm, but winds are picking up as we move into tomorrow. About average, we're seeing temperatures maybe a little bit above average, and that's going to continue. We see this warming trend getting up to the 70s for a couple days this week before cooling back off after this rain system moves out of our area. We're expecting that to come in late Tuesday night, but for the most of the day, you're just gonna see some clouds and winds do pick up. We'll see some gusts upwards of 40 to 45 miles per hour across the region. So that could cause some issues, but temperatures are going to be pretty warm. I mean, 60 by 11 a.m., so getting up to 72 by tomorrow. The next rain system moves in Tuesday evening. 8 p.m. we'll start to see those showers come in and then 9 p.m. and after is when we'll see the thunderstorm chances. We have a low risk for severe storms tomorrow and on Wednesday completely covering all of our counties. It's not going to be as severe as what we saw last Thursday. However, we could still see some thunderstorms, thunder, lightning in the area. Right now, it's still tracking just a little bit to the northeast of us. However, earlier it was further northeast. Now we're seeing it start to expand into our area, which is what I was expecting. I'm thinking 20% chance right now, but as you can see, we're seeing this tail come into our area right across that cold front, giving us more of a potential for these thunderstorms, along with the instability that's building throughout the day. We could see these storms fire up in our counties. Same thing happens on Wednesday with the rain starting to appear in Kansas City, just north of us after it leaves our area. 
Temperatures are still warm and there is a lot of moisture in the atmosphere along with this instability. So we can expect also to see some thunderstorms possibly developing earlier and in our counties. Now Thursday, we will definitely get some rain light showers to begin with 730 in the morning and then as we get a little bit later into the afternoon 130 we'll start to see some pretty severe thunderstorms in our southeastern counties that's going to continue on the next little batch of thunderstorms going just south of Bella Vista so we may not see any more later that evening although this could still track to the north and giving us some more rain chances on Thursday. Now, if that happens, rain's going to start to dissipate Friday morning. We'll have some showers still sticking around, but for the rest of your Friday, it'll be relatively clear. Maybe some clouds still in the area. Temperatures do start to drop 57 by Saturday, 51 and 47 by Monday. Don't worry though, temperatures do start to warm back up. 59 by Tuesday and back into the 70s midweek next week. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of nights though in that in that 10 day where it's going to get really cold at night. Yeah, like, down. I know to people the... are itching to start their gardens and start doing some stuff, but there's some things you probably shouldn't do yet. We're still a little early. It's still early March, you know. know. We just had a warm first part of February yeah. then it got cold. Definitely. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. The KOAM Skywatch weather app. Still ahead, both Colgan and Varsity basketball head coaches bring home some hardware. And Missouri Southern women's basketball gets left out of the NCAA tournament. John Dales has those stories and more up next. March Madness is here, at least at the Division II level. Now, late last night, the D2 Selection Show reveals that both Pittsburgh State basketball teams are heading to the NCAA Tournament. We start on the women's side. The Gorillas receive an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament after winning the MIAA Tournament yesterday. Pitt State is the four seed in the Central Region. Their opening round game is Friday night against five seed Harding. Now, that contest will be played at Southern Nazarene University. Here's a look at the Central Region women's bracket. Four MIAA teams, including the Gorillas, are in this region. All four of the first round games are scheduled for this Friday. If they win that first game, they play again the next day. Then the regional championship, the Sweet 16 game, that would be a week from today. Pitt State men's basketball also gets selected to participate in the NCAA tournament. The Gorillas receive an at-large bid after losing in the MIAA tournament championship game yesterday. Jeff Boshi's group not in action until Saturday night. They're the five seed in the central region. They will face fourth seeded Minnesota State Moorhead. Here's a look at the men's central region bracket. Minnesota State is the top seed and the host for the opening three rounds. The round of 32 takes place the following day, that's Sunday. Then the Sweet 16 will be on the 19th, that's next Tuesday. The Gorillas join Northwest Missouri in Fort Hayes State as the other MIAA qualifiers. And one of the biggest stories from Selection Sunday, at least around here, is Missouri Southern women's basketball getting left out of the NCAA tournament. The Lions, considered by many to be on the bubble of receiving an at-large bid, but after losing three of their final four games to end the season, including an opening round loss to Pitt State in the MIAA tournament, the Lions do not receive an invitation to compete in this year's tournament. Now we have put a bow on the high school basketball season in the four states. Today, the CNC releases its all-conference awards and selections. Colgan girls basketball head coach Abby Farabi is named the 2023-24 CNC Coach of the Year. This comes after she helps lead the Panthers to a perfect 12-0 record in conference play. Colgan also brings home a third place trophy from the Class 2A state tournament in Dodge City. Here are the girls first and second team all CNC honorees. Colgan has four players selected to the first two teams. Led, led by unanimous first team players, Lily Brown and Jaquela Davis, 
Riverton's Chloe Parker, other unanimous first teamer, and EJ Wells also on the first team. We have the full list as well as honorable mentions on our website. Meanwhile, Colgan head coach Clint Heffern is named the CNC Coach of the Year for boys basketball. The Panthers tied Girard for the regular season championship with a 10-2 record in conference play. Colgan finished the year with a 19-4 record, was ranked third in the final coaches poll of the season. Here are the first and second team, boys all CNC honorees. We have four unanimous selections to the first team. Girard's Aiden Troike, Frontenac senior Trey Kramer, Colgan senior Jack Schremer, and Galena junior Jack Perry. You can find the full list, including honorable mentions, at koamnewsnow.com slash sports. That's a look at sports. We'll be back with more news after this. Well, the Mega Millions jackpot has risen to an estimated $735 million, making it the sixth largest in Mega Millions history. The jackpot has been growing since it was won in early December. Now, if there is a winner in tomorrow's lottery, they can take the jackpot in 30 annual installments, or they can take a one-time lump sum of $356.7 million. That's before taxes, so you know you wouldn't even get a like two thirds of that. Meanwhile, Powerball's drawing on Saturday has a jackpot of nearly 521 million. I'll take my chances and get a ticket, I think. Oh, I would love to, but I don't <laughs> have that kind of luck. I don't either. That's why I'm still here. <laughs> uh, final look at weather. So we've got some thunderstorm chances tomorrow evening. Um, and again on Wednesday now only still 20% just because it hasn't developed in our area yet on the models but we still could see that shift into our area and then a 40% chance of thunderstorms Thursday clearing out Friday morning. All right we'll be keeping our eye on that for sure. Definitely. Thank you Lindsay. Well thank you for watching. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.